Welcome back. You're watching the 3D Bot Maker Diecast Racing League. Here we are with the Classic Stock Car Tournament Round 1, Groups 3 and 4, brought to you by Nero62 Custom Diecast. Once again, I can't say enough good things about how amazing these custom cars are. A wonderful job done by Nero62. Absolutely. These classic cars look amazing out there on the track. Up first in today's race, we have Sub4RA driving in the AMC Javelin AMX. Next to him is... Calic... Um, I, I don't know how to say that name. Calic Cools Man. Uh, next, we have Lance Velasco in the 1967 Chevelle. Calico Kid... No, that's not it. And last up in the number 40 Coors Light 71 Dodge Charger is Hunter Cordray. DJ Khaled. No, no. Just, Khalid. Just, just let it go, 3D. Wiz Khalifa. We can just call him number 11. All right, fine. I guess that works. We've got sub 4 and number 11 starting off in the front row. Just a reminder of the rules. The drivers will compete in four races. Their points will be added based on how they finish each race. sub 4 off to an early lead followed by Lance Velasco. Looks like number 11 got flipped around back on that turn. Lance Velasco trying to pass on that second turn. He gets blocked by sub 4 Here they go through the final turn. sub 4 with a decent sized lead here. Can he hold on to it? Yes, he does. Here comes Hunter Cordray to take third. And number 11 finishes going in reverse. Well, we've got a little fender bender out here. Lance Velasco running into the divider. Hunter Cordray runs into his side. And hey, this time the accident was not caused by the beer car. Yeah, but we still don't encourage drinking and racing. Number 11 gets turned around on that section of track, just like the Superbird from the last race. Yeah, these cars definitely handle the track a lot different than the Ferraris from the last tournament. The Ferraris sit nice and low and handle the track really smooth. These stock cars have completely different handling on the track. Well, we've certainly had more wrecks with the stock cars, that's for sure. Number 11 out in the lead, he's followed by Sub 4 Array. Hunter Cordray and Lance Velasco falling behind. Sub 4 Array is right on number 11's tail. Oh, oh, we've got a man down. Sub 4 Array eats it back there on the second hairpin turn. Ouch. Number 11 is all by himself. That race went from four cars down to one really quick. That race right there might be a determining factor for number 11 to advance on. Three cars DNF, he's the only one that finished. He's now your current leader. I'm not sure what happened to Sub 4 Array. It doesn't look like he made contact with the other car. He just lost control of it going around the corner. Sub 4 Array is no stranger to the 3D Bot Maker Diecast Racing League, but this is his first time at the new race mountain track. And if you're into NASCAR racing, make sure you check out the Sub 4 Array YouTube channel. We both have cars racing over there in the Adult Diecast Racing Cup. Yeah, we haven't been doing very well. There's certainly room for improvement. Yeah, maybe a nice donation will secure our spots in the next race. I'm pretty sure that's called a bribe. Nope, donation. It's a tight group coming out of the first corner. Hunter Cordray in the lead, he gets passed up by Lance Velasco. A nice overtake there by Lance. He's stretching that lead out as he goes into the last corner. He's followed by Hunter Cordray in second. And I believe that's number 11. Whoa! Whoa. My goodness. Man. Another major wreck down here at the intersection. Lance Velasco is on his roof. He got slammed after he hit that intersection. It's not looking good for Sub 4 Ray. That's going to be his second DNF in a row. Let's take another look at that finish. Oh, man, Ooh, look at that. A nasty wreck. That's going to leave a mark. We saw a very similar wreck in the last race. Let's take a look at it from the mountain cam. How do you rate that one, 2D? Let's see. That was about three spins and a barrel roll. He didn't flip all the way back around on his tires. So I'm going to dock a few points for that. Overall, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Yeah, I had him at about a 7. Yeah, that wreck definitely had some room for improvement. Here we go with the last race. We have number 11 and Lance Velasco tied with 8 points. Hunter Cordray and Sub 4 Ray tied with 5 points. That's a 3-point gap. That means Sub 4 Ray or Hunter Cordray really need to win this race if they want a chance of moving on. Lance Velasco comes out of the chicane with a big lead here. It doesn't look like anyone's going to get close to him. Let's see how he does through the final turn. Sub 4 Ray currently in second. He's trying to catch up. And the race will go to Lance Velasco. A surprising win for Lance Velasco. He qualified in 11th. Sub 4 Ray qualified in third place. And look at that. It's going to be a DNF for number 11 and Hunter Cordray. Wait, we've got a tie for second place between number 11 and Sub 4 RA. Oh, wow. That means those two are going to have to race again in a tiebreaker race to determine who will go on 
to the semifinal round. I think this will be the first time we're having a tiebreaker race in the tournament series. That is correct. This will be the first tiebreaker race we've ever had. Big question, who gets the inside lane? The inside lane advantage is going to number 11 because he finished three out of the four races. Sub 4A only finished two. We'll see if that advantage helps him. Number 11 was the sixth in qualifying. He's off to an early lead. Sub 4A passes him going into that first corner. He extends his lead going through the chicane. Let's see how he handles this corner. Having some trouble just like earlier. Number 11 gaining on him. He goes for the outside pass. Oh, Number 11 is out. over. And this race is done. Sub 4A will be advancing on with Lance Velasco to the semi-final round. A tough break for number 11, although honestly, I cannot say I was a fan. Really, why not? I couldn't say his name. Wasn't it Kalazuma? Kalufman? Cauliflower? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? I don't know, but he's gone now. Sub 4A wins our first tiebreaker race and advances on. Unfortunately, we'll be saying goodbye to number 11. I don't know if that's unfortunate. And Hunter Cordray. Now that's a name I could get behind. Yeah, well, unfortunately, he's out. Why do all the good names get eliminated? And here's a look at the right side of the bracket for the semifinals. It'll be Red Shoe, Crazy James, Lance Velasco, and Sub 4RA. Don't go anywhere. Coming up after the break is the fourth and final group of round one in the Classic Stock Car Tournament. Welcome back to the Classic Stock Car Tournament. Here we are with the fourth and final group of drivers in round one. First up, we have Marino driving the 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner. Next to him in the number 11 Pepsi car is LJ Racing, also driving in a Roadrunner, this one from 1970. In the number 29 car is JX4 Racing, driving the 1970 Chevelle SS. And finally, in the number one US Army car is Seaman driving the 1970 Buick GSX. Oh, so we have a Seaman driving an Army car. Yeah, there's a lot of different directions we can go with a name like Seaman, but let's just keep it, uh, let's keep things on track. It's gonna be hard. Seriously? What? Marino in the number 43 and LJ Racing in the number 11 will be leading us down in the first race. I'm just curious, what would you call more than one Seaman? We're not doing this 2D. It's an intriguing question. Marino pulls ahead of the pack coming out of that corner. LJ Racing right on his tail. It wouldn't be Sea People. It's a close battle for first. Let me ask Siri. Marino now ahead by a few car lengths. He gets his wheels up on the side wall but recovers. Plural of and Marino will take the first race followed by LJ Racing. Wow, that was a close finish at the intersection. We just saw a couple near misses. 2D, are you paying attention? Uh, yeah, I found the answer. Don't, don't do this. It's sailors. Uh, multiple seamen would be called sailors. Wow, that's such a dad joke. I was just curious. Not even a good dad joke either. What did I miss? Well, first, nice of you to join us again. And Marino is in the lead with five points. LJ Racing in second with three points. What about Seaman? You're not going to let this go, are you? I just want to know how he's doing in the points. He's in third place with two points. Right now, LJ Racing out in the lead with that Pepsi car. He's followed closely by Marino in the blue 43. He's gaining on him. Marino taps the back end of LJ Racing. He's off the track. Uh oh, we've seen this happen before. And Seaman passes him right before the finish line. Marino finishes in third. Look at that. Jake's for racing with a nice maneuver around Marino. He avoids a wreck and a possible DNF there. That win is gonna make LJ Racing your current leader with eight points. Marino would have been tied with eight points, but he got passed at the end. Let's take another look at what happened. This reminds me of what happened with Crazy James. He gets his tires off the side of the track. He was lucky though that he didn't get knocked off. The Seaman sees an opportunity as he goes on by in the right lane, taking second place. Right there you see Marino passes the finish line for third. JX4 having some control issues, but look at how he maneuvers around Marino to avoid the collision. It's actually nice to see the drivers taking some responsibility on the track and not just ramming into the other car. Yeah, we've certainly seen a lot of that going on in this tournament. We've got Seaman in the front right and JX4 Racing starting off on the front left. It's a close group coming down the hill. The Seaman with a slight lead, but JX4 Racing is passing him. Seaman's back in the lead. It's a real back and forth. JX4 Racing passes again. This is a close one. JX4 pulls ahead as he heads down to the last final turn. He's got a big lead now. Clean exit on that turn by JX4. Heads straight to the finish line. That is how you get it done. Seaman takes second place. And I'm not seeing anybody else down here at the finish line. There they are. Marino and LJ Racing both getting tied up over there on the final corner. Those were your two leaders going into that last race. 
So that's really gonna bring the points a lot closer going into the fourth and final race. It's a one point gap. LJ Racing and Seaman tie with eight points. Marino and JX4 with seven. This really could be anybody's race at this point. We do have JX4 Racing and Marino in the front row. There's only two spots left. Who's gonna take it? JX4 Racing off to an early lead. Marino not far behind. We've seen a lot of passing going on here. And look at Marino, he passes, followed by LJ Racing. Those two seem to be the strongest competitors in this race. Look at them go. Let's see if Marino can stay on track. He's bouncing all over the place. Boom, Marino gets slammed past the finish line by LJ Racing. And those will be the two advancing on to the semi-final round. Marino ending this race with 12 points. LJ Racing with 11 points. We've seen a lot of passing and overtakes on this section of the track. Look at Jake's four out in the lead, but watch Marino as he comes around on the outside. LJ Racing drafting off his tail. A strong finish by both Marino and LJ Racing, both of them finishing within one point of each other. Here's a look at the finish. Marino having a lot of trouble on this section of track. LJ looking for an opening to pass, but could not find it. It's certainly been another great day of racing here at Race Mountain. Here is the bracket going into the semifinals. On the left, we have Kevin Rose, Camille, Marino, and LJ Racing. On the right side, we have Red Shoe, Crazy James, Lance Velasco, and Sub4RA. Also, your current track time leader in this tournament is Lance Velasco with a track time of 18.126 seconds. Looking at the track times, I think we're gonna have a very competitive semifinal round in this tournament. I'm certainly looking forward to the action. I'm 3D Botmaker. And I'm 2D. And we'll see you on, on the track. track.